Hey, what's up? Welcome to the first episode of the EXP Boost. My name is Eric, and today we are going to be checking out Felseal Arbiter's Mark, a tactical RPG that recently came out of Early Access and has been impressing me greatly so far. It's essentially a love letter to Final Fantasy Tactics, and anyone who knows me knows that Final Fantasy Tactics is my favorite game, bar none. Like, that is by far my most played single-player game. So what we're going to do here is we're going to dive into a new game, get a little bit of a taste of the story, nothing too spoilery, just the first, like, couple minutes or so, just to give you guys the hook, so to speak. And then we're going to pop into a save file that I have that's a bit further in, and we're going to break down some of the mechanics. All right, so let's jump into a new game. And this is the first thing we're hit with is the difficulty settings. As you can see, there are a lot of options here. There are four default settings. Beginner. Veteran, which is the default difficulty. Hard. Very hard. And finally, we have the custom option where you can go through and tweak these as you please. Uh, maybe you want to turn off the injury system. The injury system is a fairly unique mechanic that when a character falls in combat, when they hit 0 HP, they gain a, well, depending on your setting, either a temporary or a permanent stat loss. Or penalty, a stat penalty, rather. And if you can turn it completely off, you can have it be an AP penalty instead, so they gain less ability points from the battle instead of taking the injury. Standard injury, which is a temporary decrease to all stats, can be cured by letting them sit out of a battle. Uh, one battle per injury. You can stack multiple injuries and it gets quite ugly. Now you can have permanent injuries, which are 5% loss to a random stat, so not all stats. And, of course, permadeath. Injuries are permanent, and if a character gets five injuries, they can no longer participate in battle. This includes story characters. It is worth noting that your main character, Kyrie, is immune to injuries on all settings. Since it would be very, very difficult. Since she's required in most story battles. And we have various other settings here. A couple of these can be turned up even higher than what they would be on the very hard difficulty. For example, permadeath is one option. You can increase enemy stats like crazy. Yeah, you can tweak this to your liking. It's pretty, pretty awesome. We're just going to leave it on veteran for now, though, and let's jump in. authority. They are judge, jury, and executioner. But in time, the Order of Arbiters has grown complacent and corrupted. Could a threat as dire as the ancient beast itself be looming over Tiora? Alright, so we had a very nice voice acted intro there, giving us some much needed backstory. And again, if you're a Tactics fan like me, just the music and the intro to this scene, it's it's hitting the right buttons. 
Okay, so we have our characters here. Good work, Anadine. You handled yourself well. Thanks, Captain. I don't feel I actually did all that much, though. Violent confrontation isn't always necessary or desirable. Negotiation is an equally important skill for an Arbiter. Of course, you're right, Captain. Are you sure Raynor knew the time we agreed to meet, Captain? Yes, he knows, but knowing Raynor, he's probably... Did you hear that? I didn't. Help, please, anyone. It sounds like a... It sounds like it came from the alley just ahead. Let's go. Alright, well that was pretty blatant. What is the meaning of this, sir? Why on earth would you strike down an unarmed man? Explain yourself. Pesky witnesses. What a bother. You, hireling. Earn your coin for once and dispatch these interlopers. Alright, so throws us immediately into our first battle. Our objective is to defeat Alphonse. I'm going to be skipping through these tutorial messages here. But it's teaching us the basics of how to deploy units. And again, if you're a Final Fantasy Tactics fan... I don't have to explain much of this screen to you. So as you can see in the top left though, we have two out of three deployed units. So we have Kyrie and Anadine. We also have access to Virgil and Lana. Virgil is a wizard, Lana is a mender. We're going to put Virgil right here. And we can choose which way they're facing, which is also good. And if you need to make any last minute changes, you can access your troop screen from the uh, from the deployment stage. So you can get in here and make changes like, oh, I need to change his class really quickly. Which is very handy. Uh, something I will note while we're here, it shows you silhouettes of classes that you have not yet unlocked. But it gives you a vague idea of what they are. For example, you can see their stat growth, their usable equipment, what their class passives are, and most importantly, the requirements to unlock them. So you can see whatever this is requires a level 3 scoundrel and a level 3 mender. So that's pretty interesting. But yeah, if you need to make last minute changes, you can access this before you go into the battle. Alright, so let's get this battle started. By lawful decree of the Arbiters, I order you to lay down your weapons and surrender. Now. You, an Arbiter. This is even more tiresome than I thought. Hireling, exterminate these pests for me, and you will receive a tidy bonus. At once, Lord Dalphons. As you wish. Anadine, it looks as though you are about to face your first real battle. Yes, I see. I am ready, Captain. I'm sure you are. But why don't we quickly review the basics just to be safe? Yeah, I know the basics. Now then, let's deal with this scum. Okay, so a few things I want to point out here, again, for people familiar with tactics. You know, you'll notice the first major change... At the top of the screen, turn order. Very nice, conveniently located, not hidden in like three menus that, honestly, I think I beat Final Fantasy Tactics the first time without knowing I could look at the turn order. Uh, some other interesting things. Every option shows you a tooltip for it. And under your basic attack and your abilities, you'll notice it tells you your range and gives you all the information about the ability including what stats they scale with, which is incredibly useful. All right, so let's let's get to some smashing. All right, so you deal extra damage if you can attack a target from the side, and even more damage if you can attack them from behind. So we know on the turn order, Anadine has the next turn, 
So I'm going to smash him really quick with a little axe to the face. And now we get to choose which direction our character is facing. This is important because, like I said, you don't want to get hit from behind. It's hard to not be hit from the sides, but you want to protect your backside. So we'll leave her facing that way, so they have to at least walk all the way around her. I'm going to bring Anadine up. That way she kind of blocks off that pathway, so they can't get over to Virgil. And it makes it a little difficult to get around Kyrie. And we're just going to give him a good smack as well. Just a little hammer to the face. I'm going to leave her facing this way. Alright, so Anadine takes a shot. I'm going to move Virgil up a spot. Let's hit him with some fire. We hit it right here, it'll hit both enemies. Ah, enough, I yield. A wise choice, if a bit late in the coming. And we've achieved victory. So yeah, spellcasting is instant. You don't have to wait for a fairly clunky turn system that is very unintuitive and seems random at times. Everything is instant. Alright, so the victory screen. We got gold, we got some items, we got ability points. So we got points for the completion of the map. We got a bonus because Kyrie never fell. This is kind of the compensation for her being immune to injuries, is you're incentivized to keep her alive for the AP bonus. Vicarious learning, that is ability points given to characters for classes they are not currently using. For example, we had Virgil the Wizard participate in the battle while Kyrie and Anadine are both mercenaries. So, our two mercenaries gained 18 points as wizard for learning a little wizardry from Virgil, who also learned 18 points in mercenary. Uh, yes. And you'll also notice that our benched units got 60, so half of the AP you gain for clearing the map goes to your benched unit so your characters that aren't participating don't fall drastically behind. It definitely encourages rotating out your characters. Especially if you have injuries and whatnot. It's very nice. Ladies, there you are. What's this? You didn't tell me we were going to a party. Rainer at last. Weren't we supposed to meet an hour ago? We could have used your help with these thugs. No matter. This gentleman kept us company, and now we will show him our gratitude by providing him with a nice comfy cell. You cannot be serious. Do you know who I am? I am a lord. Lord Alphonse, to be precise. As a nobleman of the realm, I command you to release me. Slaying an unarmed man, attempting to eliminate the witnesses to your foul crime, and now resisting lawful arrest. There are limits to the privileges of nobility, as you are about to learn. Hmm. An arbiter and a simpleton, I see. Very well. Let us proceed with this farce, if you must. Bring me to the arbiter's chapter house for my trial. Are you suddenly struck dumb as well as simple? The knight's chill does not agree with me. Make haste and escort me to the chapter house, wench. Rainer, I've decided to make a small detour to Illustre. We will personally deliver this nobleman to the main chapter house. Clever. I wonder how much sway the little lordling has in Illustre. Very little, I suspect. Gather our people and make everything ready. We move at first light. On it. Now, to ensure you are comfortable for the trip, 
Outrageous. Simply outrageous. Simmer down or I'll pull out a gag next. No one bothers washing the gags in between prisoners, mind you. Mipless shut him up. Very well. What about the other one, Captain? Just a henchman. We'll drop him off at the local chapter house. No need to cart them both all the way to Illuster. Let's head for Illuster now. I'm sure our enemies... Our imminent guest is eager to get started on his trial. Alright, but what Rainer just said there is too that we should recruit someone from the guild. And we will do just that. So if we click on a city, we have access to shop and guild. Let's stop by the shop real quick just to show it off. And you can see they sell your expected amounts of weapons and armors and a later accessories but what you're going to notice here is as i scroll through this they don't sell items there are no consumables you can also sell and try stuff on we'll get to the consumable thing in a minute but first let's go visit the guild and see what we can recruit so we have some options here. We have Recruit, Change Appearance, Reset Level. So Recruit, let's just do exactly what it says. Recruit a new unit. We can change the appearances of our generic units. Not our story characters, unfortunately, but we can customize our generics. And Reset Level resets a character to level 1. In case you screwed up their stat growth tremendously or something. I would not recommend using that unless you are absolutely somehow screwed. Anyway, let's look at recruiting. So, first thing we notice here, we can recruit at different levels. It costs an extra gold for every level we go up, but you can recruit a character up to a level equal to Kyrie's. So right now Kyrie is level 2, so we can recruit up to a level 2 unit. You can also pick the class, which will be any class you currently have access to. And for the purposes of their stat scaling, they will be considered to have always been that class. Of course, you can choose male, female. And you can customize their appearance. You can lock them to their class-specific items, like their hats. Or you can turn it off and just let them do whatever. Customize outfits, color schemes, customize their name, give them a custom portrait, so there's quite a few options. I believe it's also possible to import your own pictures if you have them. I'm not sure exactly how the process works, but it was mentioned in the little guide thing recruit this person. Boom, boom, got him. So let's have a little bit of a look at the various uh, troop options here. So we'll pop on to Kyrie here. You'll notice characters that have the little stars next to their feet. That means they have enough ability points to learn something. Alright, so we have the option to set abilities. Again, if you're familiar with Final Fantasy Tactics, this is uh, no surprise to you. You get a main class and a subclass. Your main class determines your stat growth, and you automatically get the two passive abilities known by that class once you've unlocked them. In this case, Kyrie doesn't have them. And then you can pick which secondary skill set you want. You get to pick two passive abilities. These can be any that you know that are already covered by your main class. And a reaction ability, or a counter ability. So things like counter attack, counter magic, etc. So let's learn abilities. So Kyrie can learn a new 
mercenary ability. You can see instead of having a massive list of abilities that can be learned, it's a much more refined talent tree structure. Which is good, because while Final Fantasy Tactics had a ton of abilities, for being completely honest, a lot of them were useless. So this is a much more refined system, and I'm very much okay with having less but more useful abilities. So first choice here is between Power Strike and Mind Strike. We'll take Power Strike just because. We can see that unlock the Knight class. Learning an ability in a class increases your level in that class. So we could change Kyrie to a Knight now if we wanted. And we can go cycle through this real quick like I showed earlier. You can get a little preview of the different classes. You can also sort your units however you want. I tend to just sort them by number. Alright, and one more menu I want to cover here. This is your crafting menu. That's right, crafting. Now it's not a complicated system. As you saw, we got items when we won the battle. You can also get them as drops from just defeating enemies. You can also find them in chests hidden on maps. Okay, let's talk about the item system because this is one of the biggest changes and it does not work like it does in most games. Like I said before, there are no consumables, at least not that you can buy. Instead, you have a set amount of consumables that you can use in every battle. For example, right now, we have two uses of potion. So what we can do is if we want to use more potions per battle, we can find the necessary crafting materials, upgrade our potions, which will then make them heal more. I believe they, at level 1... They heal for 45, so this would heal the, or increase that to 75 and increase our maximum uses from 2 to 3 per battle, as you can see there in the tooltip. And this is true for all of these items. Some of these you don't even have access to at all yet until you get the first tier. So yeah, there's no reason to hold back on your items in a battle. If you desperately need to drop that, uh, that full potion... Go ahead and do it. So yeah, that's a little bit of the crafting system and how items work. So, yeah, you have a limited amount per battle. It refills automatically after the battle, so you don't have to spend any gold or visit any specific places to restock. It's just you have this many items to use per fight. You can also craft some gear. One thing you'll notice is it doesn't tell you what the gear is or what the materials are. But you'll see here, since we have some snake bite oil, it tells us that these particular items require snake bite oil. Once you've discovered what both components are, you can then craft the item. It will reveal what it is to you before you craft it. So you won't have to gamble on anything. For example, when this is revealed, it'll tell us the name, and then the tooltip will tell us what it does. Uh, gadgets are for the engineer, or engineering skill. I'm going to assume there's an engineer class. I have not unlocked it yet in, in my bit of playtime. We have badges, which unlock secret classes. So that sounds delightful. And you can view your list of components if you need to. All right, so that covers a lot, honestly. Uh, another thing I do want to cover, though. Actually, let's load up the other file, then I'll cover it. So let's load. We'll load my main save here. It's a bit further in. So you can see I've unlocked a bit more of the map. So you'll notice three kinds of dots on the map. You have green dots, which are battlefields. These are where your encounters typically take place. 
And it's worth mentioning there are no random encounters. If you want to fight something, you simply go to a battlefield, click on it, and you'll have the option to patrol. Let's go to a different one so I can show some other stuff here. But you'll get a brief description of the battlefield. You'll be able to see the enemy level range. You can see enemies here are level 2 to 5. And you'll also see how many treasures you've opened. Certain maps have treasure chests. So you can collect them and get some pretty awesome loot. It's worth noting, though, you cannot miss a treasure chest. If you're not able to get to it on your first pass through an area, you can simply come back and do a patrol, and the chest will still be there. There's no penalties for not being able to access something immediately. For example, one of the two treasures on this map I had to come back for once I figured out how to get up to it. The other icons on the map are... Cities, the blue icons. The red icons are story progress. And you'll occasionally see icons marked with a little, like, flag symbol. That indicates there's some kind of character event. Kind of an optional story thing you can check out. Typically a special cutscene that gives a little bit of character development. So it's pretty nice. Anyway, let's head, we'll go right here to the woods, and let's hop into a battle. And demonstrate some more detailed gameplay. Alright, so we're going to throw Kyrie right there. Put Rainer in the back. And we'll put Anadine right here. And who else do I want to take? We should probably get some casters up in here. So we'll get our healer. And we'll take our druid, who's kind of a hybrid. And we'll take this dude. And we're good to go. Alright, so battle start. Now, if there is any complaint I do actually have about the game, it's that you cannot rotate the battle maps. And that's been explained on the Steam forums that it is. Primarily because the maps are actually hand-drawn 2D images, so... It's not really a feasible idea to rotate them. So, well, that's a little disappointing. It's a good reason, I guess. The maps do look really nice, so I can't fault them too much for that. Anyway, I'm going to put you right here. And do you know anything that's beneficial? Not at the moment. So if you end your turn without taking an action, it does speed up your acquisition of your next turn. Uh, moving does not affect that, however. So you can move and simply end your turn. Okay, let's keep people kind of spaced out. Put you here. And I'll move, put Anadine, actually that's probably a bad spot, let's move her, hmm, let's move her here. She has a little more flexibility with her movement because she has a spear, so she has a little extra range than the other melee. Alright, solid counterattack. Alright, 
right, so I'm gonna move Rainer over here across this gap. I'm gonna have him use a rooting shot. Try to lock this guy in place because those have a fairly nasty AoE attack. So if I can keep him from moving, that's pretty helpful. There's still a second one, though. Well, also, you can free look around, check out your enemies. You can see what their uh, weaknesses and resistance is. Now, under the resistance there, you see he has minus 50 to fire. It means he has a negative 50 resistance. It does not mean that fire will do less damage. Negative is good in most cases. So it means you kind of want to hit him with a fire attack if you have the option. So we're going to move down here. And we're going to grab fire. And we're going to drop it right there. That way it doesn't hit Kyrie. There was his reaction ability going off. Alright, so let's move Kyrie into a good spot. Unfortunately, there's not a ton of things we can take advantage of right here. He has it low health, so we just want to crack him in the face. Get rid of him. Hey, Kyrie leveled up. And that was something I was kind of avoiding. Or at least was trying to. Thankfully, our healer got a turn, so it's not too big of a deal. Let's do holy magic, mass heal. Who all took that? Just you two? Fair enough. Get them healed up. Alright, we can demonstrate a mechanic here. So it's worth knocking your enemies around if you have the option. We have Forceful Strike, which does damage and pushes an enemy. So we can actually push him into the enemy behind him and deal a little damage to both of them. Very handy. Hmm. Doesn't look like there's much Anodine can do at the moment. So I'm going to move her up. And we will have her defend. Alright, here come the dogs. Their weird little teleport ability. Which can really mess up your positioning. Thankfully, Kyrie ain't having it. She's just tearing fools up. Alright, what do we got? You're at fairly low health. Can't finish you, though. Can finish you, however. So let's go survival. Let's collect pelt. Nope, that won't get the kill. Damage penalty is too much. Alright, so let's just take him out. And we got a catalyst. Very nice. And a level up for Rainer. Alright, so let's take a look at our enemies. We know the dogs are weak to fire. And this guy's even more weak to fire. So I feel like we should be hitting him with fire. Okay, let's bring our druid up. Throw out some fire. Unfortunately, I don't think there's a spot where we can place it from here. It will not also hit our other guy. So let's 
There we go. Boom. Burn. Unfortunately, still alive. Okay, Kyrie has seen some better days. I'm thinking the best option for Kyrie at the moment is to try to kill this thing. And that will do it. We don't want it hitting us with any more Earth spells. And that brings up your turn. She was close to Kyrie. Throw out that heal too. Get that HP up. Get those levels. Smack this dog up. Now, while the spear has a two panel range, I don't want the dog to be able to move. Give it a little stabby stab. That guy's still rooted, so he can't do anything, though the root did wear off. Oh, I know you're not healing. Surely not. Alright, what do we have over here? You're at 56. You're at 81. So the way I have Rainer set up right now is he has fairly powerful crits. So we're going to see if we can deal some massive damage from behind here. And it didn't crit, but it was a 60. Can't hate on a 60. Right, and what are you weak to? You're weak to darkness and earth. You're not resistant to earth, but you're only weak to fire. Alright. So let's... Let's do some earth. Ah. Thorn damage. Let's move you away from them. Alright, Kyrie, let's have you do a little knockabout. Okay, brings us back to healer. Okay, that, that one's almost dead, so you have some magic. We'll just have you snipe that kill. Those are both fairly low. Unfortunately, we can't get to the bigger enemy, so we will continue taking out this dog. Cool. So we've avoided quite a bit of damage. Had a good dodge there. And he killed it with the counter attack. Nicely done. So we get our rewards. You do get less reward or less AP for uh, doing non-story battles, but so grinding is grinding, I suppose. You do get plenty of money and items, though. So you can't complain too much. Anyway, this has been a look at Fell Seal Arbiter's Mark. An absolutely fantastic tactical RPG that I can't recommend enough. So, by all means, if this video interested you at all, be sure to check it out. It's available on Steam, on PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. So, be sure to give it a look. If you like this video and would like to see more like this, please consider hitting that subscribe button. If you have any further questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. Anyway, thank you for watching. And I'll see you on the next EXP Boost. See you then.